Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. Today I'm here with another comparison video. Been doing these pretty much all spring long, so if you missed any of them, you might want to go back and check them out. Um, I've done, I think, 12 previous videos of teams that the White Sox will play in 2021, and one of those teams is the Baltimore Orioles. So yeah, we're going to do a comparison of the Chicago White Sox to the Baltimore Orioles, and I'm going to give you the lowdown on the Orioles. Okay, so just to recap really quickly, the uh, White Sox team, uh, you have their starting lineup. And their starting lineup will be something along the lines, of course, this is up to Tony La Russa, but it'll be something along the lines of Tim Anderson at shortstop leading off. Adam Eaton or Adam Engel in right field, depending on the pitcher. Nick Madrigal at second. Yasmani Grandal at catcher. Jose Abreu at first base. Eloy Jimenez, probably in left field, but he can DH from time to time. Uh, Johan Moncada at third base. Luis Robert in center field. And Larry Garcia at DH, or possibly Andrew Vaughn, if he makes the roster out of camp. Which I personally think he should, and I expect, but you never know. But if he does, he could be the DH. And then Larry Garcia would serve the role that I think he's best suited for, and that is super utility guy. So you got their rotation. Uh, Lance Lynn. Lucas Giolito, who had a 1.05 whip, I believe, last year. Very good. Uh, Dallas Keuchel, who had a 199 earned run average for the White Sox last year. Dylan Cease. Michael Kopech, assuming that Kopech is ready for the rotation. But even if he's not ready for the rotation, he'll probably be in the bullpen. As a matter of fact, Tony La Russa has hinted at the fact, or even really said it, that he will start the year in the in the uh, bullpen and then probably at some point during the season work his way into the starting rotation. And then you've got uh, Ronaldo Lopez and Carlos Rodon as possible fifth starters. Now, uh, going to their uh, bullpen, you've got the newly acquired Liam Hendricks, who came over from the A's. Great guy, great pitcher, probably going to be the closer for the Sox. Uh, Cody Hewer, Aaron Bummer, Evan Marshall, uh, Matt Foster, Garrett Crochet, who can throw 100 miles an hour, nice, uh, and Jace Fry. Um, I had, until recently, had Jimmy Cordero up there, but I think Jimmy Cordero has to undergo... Tommy John surgery, and he will probably be missing for the entire season. Now, if there's a weakness here, if there's a couple of weaknesses, oh, and then the bench. Let's go over the bench really quick. Um, that would be uh, Zach Collins at catcher, Nick Williams, backup outfielder, Billy Hamilton, who they recently just acquired. Probably uh, they signed him to a minor league contract. I don't know if we'll ever see Billy Hamilton. If the rosters are expanded enough that allows them to keep him, you know, and I think they start at 26. So I don't know that that allows Billy Hamilton to make the team, but we'll see. And then uh, Mike Rodolfo and Danny Mendick. So if there's any weaknesses here, I think it's potentially when you start the season without Kopech in the starting rotation... The, starting, the back end of the starting rotation is kind of a little bit of a weakness. And then you've got Zach Collins as the backup catcher. Now, perhaps he will 
prove to be a viable backup. Of course, that's what we're going on right now. Um, because Yerman Mercedes has been having a great camp, and he could be the backup catcher. And he's a better defensive catcher. And uh, and the way he's been hitting, who knows? You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Um, I don't want to really go out on a limb and say it's going to be Zach Collins, but it could be. Um, or it could be Yerman Mercedes. Now, it's notable that uh, Rick Porcello is out on the free agent. Uh, market, and I would really love to see the White Sox sign Porcello. I'm actually surprised that nobody, not even today's comparison team, the Orioles, have signed Rick Porcello. Kind of a shock. But, you know, who am I to say? There's probably reasons behind that, but um, yeah, I would go out and get Porcello for this Sox rotation, at least to start the season. But, again, nobody asked me. So now we're going to go to the Orioles. And the White Sox last year were 35 and 25. We tied for second with the Indians. And we um, uh, made the playoffs, lost to the A's in the first round of the playoffs. The Orioles, on the other hand, last year, they were the opposite. They were 25 and 35. But they have improved markedly. And I will, I will go over that. So now their, their lineup, you've got um, Cedric Mullins, Trey Mancini at DH. Uh, I'm trying to get out of the way so that you can see everything here. Uh, um, Santander in right field. Ryan Mountcastle at first base. He is a big talent. Chance Cisco at catcher. Austin Hayes in left. Mikhail Franco, who they just signed apparently right off the free agent list because he was a free agent yesterday when I looked. Um, Freddie Galvis at short and Yolmer Sanchez. You remember Yolmer Sanchez. He used to be on the White Sox. Um, that's their lineup. Now, it, it strikes me that defensively, this is an excellent team, especially up the middle. You've got Cedric Mullins in center field is a great defensive center fielder. Then up the middle in the infield, you got Yolmer Sanchez, who is a gold glove quality second baseman, and Freddie Galvis, who is an excellent defensive shortstop. And uh, and then a catcher, Chan Sisko, who's improving at catcher. Uh, Mikhail Franco is probably, he was probably brought in for offense because he's not as good a defensive third baseman, I don't think, as, um, well, he's just not a very good defensive third baseman. Uh, Mountcastle, the uh, the jury is still out on how good a defensive first baseman he is. Of course, we know that the Orioles have a good defensive first baseman who can't hit. So anyway, let's go to the Orioles rotation. You've got John Means, Keegan Aiken, Kramer, Lopez, Felix the Cat, Hernandez, and... Matt Harvey, who will probably start the year in the minor leagues for the team and could be on hand for emergency um, starting in case they lose somebody to injury, which, as I have said in many videos in the past, happens all the time. You always lose people to injury. So, um, yeah, you may be having to see Matt Harvey at times. Now in the bullpen, you got Tanner Scott, Cesar Valdez, Travis Lakins, Dylan Tate, Hunter Harvey, who is no relation to the other Harvey, um, Paul Fry, uh, Sean Armstrong, and Cole Sulser. So, um, yeah, yeah, the Harveys, you got the Harvey brothers. No, I'm just kidding. I said they're no relation. They aren't. Um, Matt Harvey is Matt Harvey, and Hunter Harvey is the son of former Major League pitcher, um, I forget his first name, the other Harvey. Well, anyway, there was a Harvey that pitched for the Marlins, and he, uh, Hunter Harvey is his son. So... Anyway, now we go to the 
bench for the Orioles, and you've got Rio Ruiz, who until a few days ago would have been the starting third baseman, but now he is on the bench because that's going to be Mikhail Franco, probably. DJ Stewart, backup outfielder, Paul Severino, or no, Pedro Severino, sorry. Pedro Severino, backup catcher. Um, Pat Valaika, backup infielder and first baseman, came into his own last year. Was very good at um, uh, on the offensive side of the ball for the first time, probably in his career, um, in extended play in the 60-game season. And then you got Chris Davis. Chris Davis, of course, is the first baseman who is very good defensively but can't hit. And last year was no exception. The year before that was horrendous. He has a problem hitting the ball at all. It's sad. Now, it's notable that Roto Champ, where I got this information, had Chris Davis in the minor leagues. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't see how the Orioles can keep a guy that they're paying all this money to because they're still paying him a big chunk of money that they don't want to pay him. But if you got him and you're paying him, you're not going to keep him in the minor leagues. And then you got Yusniel Diaz, backup outfielder. So it strikes me that the Orioles have improved markedly. They are much better. They last year, 25 and 35, they were 10 games under 500. They may not be that bad this year. Now, their only big problem, they've improved a lot, but their biggest issue is that they're in a division where a lot of good teams got better. Or let's just say a couple of good teams, the Blue Jays and the Yankees got better. And the um, Tampa Bay Rays are still a force even though they let Snell go um, to the Padres. And they didn't just let him go, they traded him, but they didn't get anything that was really Snell-like in return. But they're still a good team. They're still a very good formidable team in that division. Um, and then the Red Sox, who, if their rotation stays healthy, and I did do the Red Sox review with the help of Chris Dufour. You should go check that out. Chris Dufour from, he lives in the New England area and has been a Red Sox fan his entire life. You should go check that video out. But according to him, they'll be a middle of the road team, um, which is markedly better than they were last year. So the Orioles are in a good division, a very good division, and that's what their their prime problem, the prime problem for them is. But they've gotten a lot better and they are improving. They got a lot of young guys. The starting rotation, you got Aiken and Kramer. Aiken is one of their um is one of their highly touted um up and coming prospects. Creamer, I think probably you could you could put him in that um, that classification too, and really the entire bullpen is just untested young guys um, who have either been highly touted um, prospects for the team or are just guys that are relatively young and haven't had much major league experience. So you don't really know what you're going to get from that bullpen. It's kind of like a wild card out there with that bullpen. So that would be something you would work on if you were the Orioles front office, if you thought you were going to contend, which the Orioles probably are not ready to do. And their um, general manager probably realizes they are not ready to do it. It was sounding great, but I could have used a little more cowbell. But I like their management. I like their front office, their, their, their manager on the field. I love the team. And the improvement. It's it's coming along great. But the thing is, they're not there yet. Now, do I think we're going to steamroller this team? No. I don't think we'll steamroller them. I, but I think we will win the series, uh, the season um, series against them. We should do that. But um, we are, we're going to have our hands, we may have our hands full with this team. Because... It's pretty good. They got they got some good players. And if those young players 
are ahead of schedule and better than expected, oh boy, look out. All right, don't look out if you're the Yankees or the, um, what was the other top team? The Yankees or the Rays, possibly. Yeah, I don't think they really have to look out. Although, they may lose their share against this team, too. But they have to play them a lot more than we do. We're only going to play them maybe six times. So, um, yeah. So, that's my... That's my rundown. What do you guys think? You think the Orioles are an up-and-coming, good, young team that's going to get better, a lot better, in the coming years and that we may have to be on the lookout for in 2022 or 2023, perhaps? Um, do you think we're going to steamroller them in 2021, or do you think that it's going to be a competitive series? Personally, I think it'll be a competitive series, but I do, like I said, expect us to win the season series against them. So, um, you know, leave your thoughts below. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Or, you know, even if there's other content that you do like and you're not particularly thrilled about this, who knows? But you subscribe, you ring the bell, you know when I put up a new video. It doesn't cost you a penny. So, anyway... For right now, that's it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.